Right, next on the agenda, Rach, Chelsea 1-0 Aston Villa. Um, the perfect start for Bombastor. As we mentioned, Villa goalkeeper Sabrina D'Angelo almost pulled off the most heroic equaliser in stoppage time. Like That would have been goal of the season had that gone in. End, hands down. 100%. Finish the season there. Um, what do you think we learned about Bombastor's Chelsea from this opening game? Um, yeah, a lot, to kind of, a lot to kind of dissect. Well, firstly, I want to give a shout out to the Chelsea supporters group. I thought they had done a fantastic job of turning around all of the flags and stuff that they previously had with players that were were there and are no longer there and of Emma Hayes and they have a new big flag that says Viva la Revolution Ooh. with um, Bon Pastor's face on it. Oh, nice. So I really, I thought that was really cool. Um, so hats off to them for turning them around so quickly because I think it probably made her feel really, really welcome. Um, I think they got off to a great start, Chelsea. And the first 10, 15 minutes, I was like, bloody hell. This is just going to be like you know, I thought they were going to get loads of goals. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think maybe that's something they'll be wanting to work on is being more clinical. Um, you know, I think Guru Ryden played a little bit more central, but, you know, she had opportunities that didn't quite get put away. And I think the longer that went on, granted, Johanna Reiting Kanner had scored in the 36th minute, but mm-hmm. the longer those chances went on, it was almost like it got a little bit in their heads and yeah, it, allowed, sure. it allowed Villa to come into the game because they'd managed to keep fend off those opportunities and not concede. Um, so I think, yeah, first half wise, I thought Chelsea did well, very deserving of the goal. They were exploiting that left hand side of Villa with Johanna Wright and Canarid and Bronze. They had a lot of space to utilize. And me and Sophie chatting about this and how, like, Dali was kind of being dragged central and it was leaving a lot more space for them to use. And it's no surprise then that uh, she scored from that side. And mm-hmm. I appreciate she cut it back and she scored with her left foot, which is something that Bompastor said she they she, they've been getting her to practice more in training was her left foot. So it was a it was a lovely goal. Um, but it was no real surprise that it came from there. And then Robert DePaul made substitutions to address that in the second half. And I actually was really impressed with Villa, particularly in the second half. There were phases of the game where Chelsea were on top and then Villa were on top and it it never really felt like Villa were being overrun Um, I was really impressed with their confidence on the ball yeah definitely especially around the back they didn't have that same kind of panicky style of play they used to like it was a hot potato when Mm -hmm. it was in their own half and they were like well get it away from me they they didn't have that anymore you know they were confident to pass around the back to kind of take on challenges and not be not fear that they were going to lose possession Um, but yeah second half I think the way he addressed that bringing on, he put Missy Bowkerns deeper, he brought on Kirsty Hansen to give them more width. And I think that caused Chelsea all sorts of problems. Yeah, definitely. I think that was one of the things I wanted to pull out is that how impressive Villa actually were. I mean, despite obviously the scoreline not being great, there were times that I think they could have had or made better use of some of the chances they had. They were really lively in the first half, especially. Loads of great uh, link-up play. That, like Winning the ball back, which I thought was like absolutely beautiful to see. They did feel like there was a real confidence, like a kind of like an energy about them. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was... A, overall, I thought it was a great performance from Villa. I think that kind of, me, to me, when you kind of look at how they've started pre previous seasons it feels like we've we've reached a new era of Villa you've gone oh they're gonna be okay yeah it it feels like actually we're not gonna be talking about them in the kind of relegation zone I know it's really early days yeah I I just I'm touching wood but at the same time it it really gave me a bit of confidence and I think if you look at the stats and look stats aren't what win you games and you know it doesn't tell you everything but I do think it's interesting that both sides had 13 shots Mm -hmm. Villa had five on target uh, Chelsea had four and Aston Villa had more of the possession and I think that's an interesting... It's interesting to look at when you think of Aston Villa of old, perhaps, 100%. Um, when they were hammered last season. But also, I think how well the kind of um, the summer signings have kind of gelled into the squad oh, yeah. so quickly. And we'll talk about the, the Chelsea summer signing in a second. But Missy Bay Kearns, uh, Chastity Grant, uh, Paula Thomas all really stood out for me. Um, it kind of feels like, you know, especially Missy Bay Kearns causing problems, uh, missed a huge oh, chance yeah. early on. The link up play I with Grant um, on the right wing. It just it, it felt like there was a lot of things that you could kind of really look forward to seeing sort of more of. Um, yeah, and this is this will be this will be the test is when we see them they're playing Spurs next week yes. right that'll be a really interesting test that around like a, in a very evenly matched battle yeah. yeah and like it's seeing how they perform against teams in and around them where you don't maybe have that same hype where mm-hmm. you're like yeah bring on Chelsea kind of thing um, so that's that's going to be the real test and that's where they need to be picking up the points definitely um, I think that's where a lot of these mid-table teams fall down is the consistency around the games in and around them yeah, I think, um, I mean, we'll touch on Spurs um, a little bit in a second um, based on their um, the result from the weekend with, with Crystal Palace. But yeah, I think that for me feels like quite 
almost like the spiciest fixture of next weekend, to mm. be fair, just to see, because that that feels like... It's the Bobby Ball battle. The what? Robert DePau, Robert Villaham, the Bobby Ball battle. Oh my God, who's calling it that? Me, I just did. That's just come off, that's just come off the top of your head right yeah. now? Yeah. You hadn't thought about that before? No. That's why We had the Skinner battle this weekend, and now we've got the Bobby Ball battle next weekend. Oh, the Skinner battle. What is that? Mm. Uh, right, talking of also newbies back to the well, I said newbies back to the league. You're desperate to call her a newbie, and everyone else is like, no, yeah, well, she, no, well, she is, well, she kind of, she's a new entrant for this year. Okay, well, that's not what the category was, but people seem to really have an issue with you calling her a newbie. Yeah, well, people can have an issue with that. It's you know, I didn't. But there you are. Well, thank you. That's really, really lovely of you. Um, Lucy Bronze started and had a solid display on her debut. What did we think? I I thought she had a really good game, to be fair. I was really impressed with how solid she looks, like how well she gelled with the rest of the back line. Like, I feel like... Her and JRK linking up really well. Yeah, I didn't think there was that kind of... There was always that thing that we talk about with Lucy Bonds, kind of like pushing really far up, leaving gaps at the back, that kind of thing. But I, I, again, I think I think she kind of held her nerve a lot. And it must have been a little bit daunting coming back to the WSL. Yeah. Like the first know. half, she had plenty of space to play with. For sure. Um, and I think she utilised that well. And then in the second half, they had, you know... A, a lot of defending to do and I think they did that well as well mm-hmm. um, there were a few moments where uh, Villa broke through but yeah I think th- it wasn't one of those where you were looking at her going oh god she's left all this space I think yeah she had a solid solid, solid game. return yeah good start Luce Congratulations and thank you. Thank you very much for your return. Um, Hannah Hampton also started in goal. Neil has asked on Instagram do you think Hampton will be the Chelsea number one this season? I think yes. This is a really interesting era that we've come into um, where we have got not that we didn't have top class goalkeepers before but we've got goalkeepers now at top teams that could be number one anywhere else yeah and they've got two of them well literally like well they've got uh, Van Dom more, Salah more, Zinsberger like. uh, Kiara Keating you know she's a number she could be a number one anywhere 100%. as well they've got two there you've got two now at Chelsea um, I think what's interesting is we maybe might see more goalkeeper rotation than we're used to and in that, the league y- yeah because obviously you normally have a goalkeeper that does the competitions the goalkeeper does the yeah, league but I think I think but and as you'll know like I think as the goalkeeper position has developed, um, developed there's much more skill sets that they can draw on so like in some games it might be like Hampton's distribution is key for this game or you know maybe I don't, this is the thing she's a great shot stopper as well but maybe they, they'll draw on different kind of things that they want out of their goalkeepers for different matches it's hard to know though because mm. Bon Pastor is new so she's not had the kind of experience with Sachira Musevich um, the way Emma Hayes had so it's really interesting I think the fact is at least they know God forbid one of them gets injured they've got a bloody good backup Yeah I, I 100% agree and I'm kind of looking forward to there being more rotation I think it increases competitiveness when you're training because you never know who's going to start maybe week to week um, you might only find out I suppose that a day or two days before in the kind of the uh, the pre-game analysis but I think it's a really and I think there's, there's, there's goalkeepers there who are sort of there's a super young one it feels like there's one with a little bit more kind of experience well, I don't want to say old but like more mature mm-hmm. um, and I think like you know the, even the younger goalkeepers though have been exposed to really highly pressurised intense demanding situations it's crazy like the experience that you know someone like Kiara Keaton or Hannah Hampton has uh, Daphne Van Domsela and they're kind of like going against people who have been in, in and around goalkeeping for 10, 15, 20 years or so so um, and I, think I think they can both offer each other something completely different in terms of the, the challenges that they both have 